guys again. <laughs> Today's cars are only about 15% efficient, but a fuel cell car may be able to more than double that efficiency. Acceleration on this vehicle is as good or better than the V6 gasoline model of the same platform. Uh, the torque is, act is also better. It has over 200 foot-pounds of torque. The case that the car is a worldwide environmental problem is not a case of the cars itself. It's uh, the case of using the wrong energy, polluting energy. There are uh, 60 vehicle models of one vintage or another that have already been either produced or under development. General Motors holds over 30 patents on their new high-wire concept vehicle. It's a hydrogen-powered drive-by-wire car with steering that resembles that of an aeroplane. All of the controls of this car are through the electrical controls from basically the instrument panel. But the most remarkable thing about this car is that it is seated on a platform that integrates a fuel cell, a motor and steering into one highly engineered chassis. Notice that it's a very novel design in that the very front of it's coming down here, there's no engine compartment in the front, there's no en engine compartment in the back. All of the fuel cell electric drive is in, the, is in what we call the skateboard chassis. Any number of interchangeable body designs can be applied to the same chassis. And on the inside, the lack of an engine compartment creates a car that is spacious and lightweight. These cars are going to be terrific in their performance, very safe, agile to drive. And in fact, in this high-wire vehicle, because of the way the fuel cell packages, we've got a center of gravity in this car that's equivalent to the Corvette. Compared to many of the alternative cars we've seen in recent decades, this one also looks good. We have to make them cost competitive, and that's, that's our goal, and we have to do it as we introduce them into the marketplace. We don't expect our consumers to pay a, a premium. We have to make it cost competitive with what's out there today. But moving over to hydrogen poses a classic chicken and egg problem. How are you going to sell automobiles to consumers if they can't go to the corner gas station and fill up with hydrogen? And conversely, how are you going to persuade the gasoline station to put in a hydrogen dispensing unit when there's no vehicles to come in to buy the hydrogen? Not only must almost a billion vehicles be replaced, but a new energy infrastructure must be created. Fortunately, this can be done gradually, and there is a logical place to start. Things like uh, post office vehicles or delivery vehicles, taxis, where buses uh, is a really good example, where the vehicles are garaged in one site, they're refueled to that site, they go out during the day and travel and come back to that site. There are actually quite a lot of fleet vehicles that are centrally fueled that are out there. Something on the order somewhere between a half a million and a million new such vehicles, light duty vehicles that go into fleets that are centrally fueled get sold just in the United States every year. Producing large numbers of fleet vehicles containing fuel cells is going to dramatically lower their costs because of the economies of mass production. However, the availability of hydrogen at local petrol stations will take a decade or more. For those not willing to wait, the solution may be closer to home. In the not too distant future, we think the consumer may be able to buy a small appliance to plug into their, the outlet in their garage uh, from water, produce hydrogen uh, to fuel their car. These new home systems for producing hydrogen will have numerous safety systems built in. People have become quite comfortable cooking and heating with natural gas in their homes. There's no reason to think it'll be any different with hydrogen. It's possible that the first fuel cell vehicles will have a home fueling unit included in the purchase price.
Japan has long been one of the world's leading innovators in the application of technology. The Japanese are already positioning themselves to be a key player in the transition to hydrogen energy. Japan's World Energy Network project is a framework designed to support the development of hydrogen as a replacement for fossil fuels. It will be very helpful for Japan to be able to produce its own fuel. Hydrogen will make this possible. At the moment, the government is strongly encouraging the development of fuel cells and other critical technologies. The Japanese motor industry has made a massive investment in research and development. Companies like Honda, Toyota, Mazda and Nissan are moving forward with commercial strategies for their fuel cell cars. Around 2010, we expect to begin full implementation of the hydrogen fueling infrastructure. Hydrogen vehicles will be seen on our streets. Currently, we are locating some hydrogen fueling stations around Japan. There are already five in Tokyo. This will help Japanese people to become familiar and comfortable with hydrogen as a fuel. With government support around the world expanding, big business is increasingly viewing the hydrogen energy transition as a major economic opportunity. Peter Leiden at Global Business Network helps large corporations see emerging opportunities. The fact that major oil companies are committing to hydrogen is perhaps the clearest indicator that the transition is underway. Companies like Shell and BP are leading the way, expanding their vision beyond petroleum and reinventing themselves as energy companies. Jeremy Bentham, CEO of Shell Hydrogen, explains. Shell Hydrogen's purpose is to bring a new and important thread into the overall energy mix. It does this in a way which is tailor-made to support our sustainable development interests initiatives. We are working carefully with governments and even more so we are getting the experience of working with the people who will buy hydrogen and who will use hydrogen. Carol Battershell Director of Alternative Fuels, BP Energy. BP is interested in hydrogen because it's clean energy and it's the energy of the future. We're looking at it in a couple different applications, so either for use in vehicles or for small power plants. BP sells energy to consumers, so as the energy industry transforms, we'll transform as well. We've moved already from more oil to more gas, and as the technology moves along, we'll move to more renewable and alternative energies as well. If we think about the development of a significant hydrogen economy, then I think it's fair to say that it's already started. When hydrogen becomes a mainstream energy source, we're talking about an energy flow that's going to be measured in the hundreds of billions of dollars. It's enough to get any business person interested. Big ideas fare best when they offer the promise of big profits. With hydrogen, the economic upside appears to be huge. That's how the auto industry sees it, too. All things being equal, who wouldn't want a car that's got nothing but water coming out of its tailpipe? August 2003, a massive blackout in the U.S. left nearly 50 million people without electricity. A massive power outage hit New York City shortly after 4 o'clock this afternoon. A month later, the same thing happened in Italy, leaving almost the entire country without power. As our energy demands expand, the existing system appears less able to cope. 98 or 99 percent of our power failures originate in the grid, almost all of those at the distribution level. So if you want reliable and affordable power supplies delivered to the customer, you have to make the power at or near where the customers are. Experts say that the centralized architecture of the U.S. electrical